This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. Stay tuned to learn how to get a $25 online gift card to MyGirlfriendsQuiltShop.com. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're going to talk about cover stitching. I do want to say that one of the, I think maybe it was like the third or fourth of the exclusive zigzagger videos right. that we did. So if you join uh, SewHere.com as a zigzag member, you get access to a special Facebook group. And ZD and I do a live broadcast together. Yes. I'm, I keep ZD behind a paywall most of the time, I guess is... Video wise, <laughs> well, actually, I, I really feel like all of those um, videos have been just almost exquisite. Do you think they're, you think they're yeah. great? Yeah, I do. I good. think that we've really come up with some good There's stuff. There's a testimonial. I, yeah. The person who's charging yeah. for the videos the who's thinks doing they're great. It is telling you they're magnificent. <laughs> uh, Although Mallory just told me I was boring, so <laughs> the bar's not that high, is it? <laughs> all right, so. One of the one of the first videos we did was about cover stitching, and it seemed to help a lot of our members with their cover stitching. So that video of ZD kind of going through some different applications and everything um, is available still. It's archived uh, in the Facebook group for ZigZag members. So if you go to SoHere.com slash membership and then you join the ZigZag group, you will get to see it. Um, okay, so cover stitching. Let's define it. Did you already tell them we were going to talk about cover stitching? Well, I said that we did a video about oh, okay, cover I guess we did. Stitching guess I was. I, I've been making a bunch of notes. Yeah, the, vi- the video I that I was talking about well. that was really good. It's yeah. about cover stitching. Well, it is. It's about cover <laughs> stitching, and um, people liked the cover stitching. They saw the you know actually when we did the promo and showed the picture, they loved how pretty the stitching looked. Yeah, people were having. Yeah. and then they seemed to have a lot of success uh, with some tips that you gave. And of course, sewing is a very visual thing. Um, but uh, this. That's this, why we talk about it. Yeah, this video, <laughs> you know, exactly. Right. Uh, but it's, you know, it's nice. Okay, uh, to have something where you can, you know, listen while you're doing other hey, things. I want to know something, though. What podcast did somebody talk about the sewing girl on? It was you. It was a different it's podcast. It's called Straight and Curly. I've mentioned it a few times. Oh. It's the Australian people. Okay. And they were talking about, so actually, what's really funny is one of them, It they are both like, bloggers one of them's like a freelance writer right the other one does like a graphic design thing mm-hmm. oh, that's her her business uh they do this podcast kind of like for fun or in pr you know uh but the uh, the one host does a crochet like ah. school it's she, her thing is called crochet coach uh-huh and so i think that's kind of fun and um she like releases a new pattern every month has a little community you know people can pay to right. be in kind of like ours you know and um Anyway, she, they were talking about how she went to a fiber show, ah. and the other host was like, "What the heck is that? What is you that? Know? What would and they're that in be, Australia, right? so I'd imagine it's really cool because Australia has a great heritage um, they have of, all those, of fiber. They and have all those weird animals. They, they got all the sheep from. and everything. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, she, they were talking about like what might be included in a fiber show, and Carly was like, "I, you know, I'm not sure everything that would or would not be included, but maybe we should." Maybe we should ask that sewing girl. I know <laughs> this is awful. I can't remember her name yet. And then they like remembered it. And I was like, oh if you're my sewing gosh. girl, sewing if you're girl. sewing girl, am I sewing old lady? You're sewing woman, like well, super girl, super lady, Wonder Woman. Uh, but so today we're going to talk about cover stitching, and let's define what a cover stitch is, Mom. Well, without looking it up. Which is telling you from well, my Well, it's not in a dictionary well, because probably isn't. you try to write it in your phone. Well, yeah. And is it one word or two? Well, I... Or is it hyphenated? It's one freaking word. And yeah. it always it always corrects to overstitch, overstitch. when you are writing right. it. So cover stitching involves more than one needle. Yeah. Usually two. But there are machines that... We'll do a three a triple. needle, mm-hmm. triple cover stitch. So you have a double or a triple, however mm-hmm. you want to say it. And then there is just one. Th- so those are basically what you would call your top threads. And then your lower thread is a looper or something, you know, where the looper is um, taking this thread back and forth. Mm-hmm. 
between the loops of the needle threads that are coming down into the mechanism. Right. And a cover stitch is more similar to an overlock stitch than it is to the stitch that you get on your sewing machine, like the lock stitch. Yes, it's more in fact, in that it's vein. not locked. Right, it's not you locked. You can pull a thread and get it all to come undone. That's right. Unless you really want that to happen, <laughs> and then it won't. Right, right. <laughs> oh, my cover stitch came out when I didn't want it to, and then when I needed to remove it, right. it was pain. Right, took yeah. me 500 years, yes. So, so the cover stitch um, has one looper on the bottom, kind of going back and forth. It makes that serpentine look. Uh, you'll have two lines of stitching on the top or three lines of stitching mm-hmm. on the top. And this is what you might find on the bottom of your T-shirts, the yep. hems. It is, I would say, most commonly used for knit yes. hems. And even more common in um, probably, don't you think, sportswear? Like, like not sportswear, but workout wear even. Well, yeah, maybe not I anymore. Not anymore. I mean, not anymore. I was going to say, that. that's where, I think that's where I was maybe first aware of it. I mean, people and, just and now, like, I don't even know what's the difference between workout wear, regular clothes. Oh, yeah, clothes people anymore. just wear knits right. so often. I don't yeah, say knits that. Yeah, knits are so universal now. I don't say that yeah. like to be rude. I mean, it used but, to no. be that really knits <laughs> were not something that you wore sort of as fashion wear. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they were like your undergarments and and, and things so, like that. Knits are much more popular. S- than since these. they're more popular, more right. worn, and everything, I think the cover stitch is coming right. way more into the the world view of the home sewer right. and people going what is this or uh-huh. i want this or, i mean yeah. i remember when we were first like when you know i first started working at the shop and the cover stitch was something that was a little bit like that would oh, be like 14 ish years ago uh, yeah like yeah. i don't know if i need that or that. and then sort of as right. people have gotten more and more excited about garment sewing and stitching and knits, and knits less yeah. a, less afraid of and more knits yeah, on the there's market. There's just so many more knits on the market. Then people would yes. come in and say, oh, what do I have to spend to get a cover stitch? Right, okay, right. Okay, so people would ask that. Or how can I get the stitch or what is the stitch was another yes, question. Yes, how do I get this look, right. you know? Um, so a cover stitch, since it's not locked, it's like an overlock in that it will be flexible for you. It should be if it's properly formed, properly tensioned. You're it's saying a, it stretches. It's a stretchy. Right. Yes. It's it's not a stable stitch. Like I am wearing a t-shirt right, right. now and I'm stretching the hem. Right. Because it's made of stretch fuller right. fabric and, and a cover stitch. Especially like it. the hem on, on, on leggings or trousers, yeah. you know, where you want it to stretch and you want to put your foot through and you don't want those stitches to pop. Yep. So if I was on my conventional machine and I was going to make that hem at the bottom of my pants... I would probably use a zigzag, like I taught stitch with right. a zigzag, or some stretch stitch that, um, you know, was on my machine. Or I might use a twin needle, and that would be a mock type of cover stitch. So the twin needle would definitely be... Right, or your, triple needle. Your closest yeah. sort of approximation, right. because it gives us two lines of stitching. That's right. It, and it, since... It, like I said, sort of a mock. Yeah. Yes. So since the twin needle, everybody might be like, wait, it's a straight stitch. Straight stitches don't stretch. Well, the twin needle, uh, the bobbin thread looks like a zigzag right. underneath. It's going back and forth underneath. And it gives it right. some stretch, like the looper of the cover well, stitch and, and when we talk about mock stitches, I think you have to be careful, too, that... Um, you can get a mocked look of a cover stitch where you, you just stitch a straight line and then you stitch another straight right. line, but then you won't have your stretch. No. And so, that's, so yeah. you know, when you're talking about mocking a stitch, you have to think about the col- the, the actual um, look and function. Yes. So, so and, a, a twin. Be a, clear about it. A twin needle can give you that stretch. It does. Not right. quite as much. Okay. But. Yeah. Um, I mean, a, a cover stitch is just definitely stretchier. So which right. machines would you find a cover stitch on? On which machines would you find a cover well, stitch? I find mine <laughs> on my, in my studio on my combo, what I call my combo machine, uh-huh. which is a serger combo cover stitch chain stitch machine. Or um, for those of you outside the U.S., an overlock Right. Slash cover stitch. Right. And then some people say Surgeon cover. and overlock we use interchangeably. And then some people say cover lock. Yes. Okay. So right. all of these things. But right. they are two separate functions. You can get just a serger. You can get just a cover stitch machine. Right. Okay. These are two separate things. And when things. she says serger, she means an overlock machine right. too. I didn't want to be like just a right. serger overlock. Okay. Uh, but yes. 
And then we have in our studio, we have the baby lock ovation. There are many machines that are like this where you have a combination of the overlock and the cover stitch. They are different, okay? Um, The cover stitch, you don't use a blade on when you are cover stitching, okay? You do not cut the fabric. When you are just using a cover stitch. When you are just cover stitching okay i mean i guess you could turn it on well well, well, i i guess what i'm saying is on the machine we have you could actually serge and cover stitch at the same time okay you could yes okay when you are only covers generally when you're only cover stitching thanks mom because yes you can combine those stitches okay when you are only cover stitching, when you're hemming that T-shirt. Okay, right. you look at your T-shirt, everybody, that went through the machine mm-hmm. and the hem was folded and didn't right. get cut. Whereas on a serger, right. generally, you're cutting off Most the of the time you're cut- right? you have to give yourself a, a nice finish for those um, yes. threads to overlock. Yeah, so, there, yes. so on a serger or an overlock machine, these seams, the stitch that's being made is overlocking. Right the edges of fabrics that are being seamed together, whereas the cover stitch is, what? where does this word come from? What What's it covering, Mom? It's not overlocking, it's cover locking or cover stitching. Right. What What's, you know, talk to us about the structure of that hem and why it would be called that. So on the bottom, mm-hmm. This is where I believe cover stitch comes in. Is why it's called that. This is our story, and we're sticking yeah, to it. Yeah, we're sticking to it. <laughs> so on the top, I'm showing two needle threads, and on the bottom, I'm showing showing a web of of thread mm-hmm. going between those two needles or three needles, and that is covering my raw edge. Yes. Okay. Your raw edge has been turned up. Right. My raw edge has been turned up. It's so, getting covered. So theoretically it is covering that raw edge. So if you turned up a hem like on a sewing machine, mm-hmm. okay, and like straight stitched it, right. you'd have like a raw edge. Yeah, uh, there'd just be a raw okay. edge underneath. Sure. Unless you um, finished it first so we can go into oh, all sure, that crap. Sure. Let's go into semantics <laughs> and get all screwed up here. Okay, yeah. but like all in one step, you right. know, ideally the way this would work right. is you flip up the, you know, fabric. Okay. So you flip up the raw edge. It's underneath. You're stitching from the top. You get two lines of stitching that basically look like almost a lock stitch. Mm-hmm. And underneath you're getting this web or grid or whatever you want. Sort of like a... It's like a serpentine. It's, it's, I think it's a of it honeycomb. Like a, yeah, honeycomb like serpentine honeycomb look, sort of. Right. <laughs> of you know where this looper's gone back and forth and caught those needle threads and and it's made a like a web. Yeah. It's because it covers the area. Yes. Now, you can also see this done upside down. We'll talk about that a little yeah, bit. Later. Yeah, yeah, you can cover we'll stitch about up, that which later. is fun and right. we love things like that. Okay, so uh The cover stitch gives you this stretchy hem, and I guess let's talk a little bit more about technicalities and, you know, things that can happen with the cover stitch before we go into our tips. But I I think the main thing, I don't know if we got this across I'm going with you and with your direction. The main thing that I want to get across is why it's not an overlock, you know, why you can't say, hey, I've got a serger, can I cover stitch? Technically, no. There is a way to mock a cover stitch yes. on your serger, but it's not really a cover it's stitch. It's not really a cover stitch. And you are so you can sew in the middle of fabric, right. basically, you right. know, with a true uh, cover stitch machine right. or a combo, you know, machine that has that cover stitch capability, Correct. okay? You know, you don't have to fold everything over to the left of the needle. That's right. Uh, your, you know, your left, okay? Because if the needle had a face... And was looking at you. <laughs> it would be the needles, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> all oh right. Oh my gosh. Okay. So and some people drive on the wrong side of the road that we're talking to. Yeah, that's yeah. right. UK okay. people. Oh, and in Japan, usually any place where it was colonialized by the British. Colonialized. Colonialized. Colonized. Colonized. colonized colonialized. Well, Britain or Japan wasn't colonized by the British. I've researched this and I thought the same thing, but it's not true because there were a lot of places colonized by the British, and not all of those places. Well, drive on the I other think side it would have had to be at the time of driving too. Like yeah, cars would yeah. have had to be invented. Anyway, I'm not because exactly who colonized the United States. Right. But there weren't any cars then. Okay. <laughs> Great job. All right. <laughs> Moving on. 
<laughs> so whatever. So uh, when you are when you're cover stitching, there are a few ways that you can. Um, decide you want to hem something. So we, we talked about how you're covering your raw edge, but right. there's another way to do that. So you can fold up your hem. You can use a uh, measuring guide. There are guides that can attach to the machine. You mean it like a seam guide, seam, edge guide, hem, hem guide, guide, whatever, that is actually an attachment to the machine. Right. I think Baby Lock calls theirs like fabric guide or something like that. You know? Yes. Which, great, we're guiding fabric, you know? <laughs> Which is actually an attachment I thought was really silly, okay? Uh-huh. And I never told anybody they needed to get one and all this. And Stop whispering. Well, I didn't, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying that because I don't want to be embarrassed. I'm whispering my... Sam's just going to have to turn I'm it I'm whispering up. my <laughs> mistake, okay? I'm whispering <laughs> my mistake. So I didn't think a fabric guide was a big deal. Uh-huh. I, can, I can sew a straight line. Well... After I actually used one, I changed my mind. So I like fabric guides. Yes. So on with a cover stitch, you're turning that under and you can't see it. Right. Um, it's kind of hard. Uh, so there's this guide and it does it makes things it makes things a lot easier. Right. Um, for sure. So when you flip that up, if you have um, tried on your garment or you know that there's a one inch hem allowance or there's a whatever, you can fold that up and line everything up and really that look at the video like look at the video for the, for, right. for that action. So what you're doing is, is you're making sure that your needles mm-hmm. straddle the raw edge. That's right. Okay. Therefore, when that webbing of thread is made on the back, it will enclose your raw edge. Or if you are... Or if you don't want to do that and it scares you. Or if you're being like... I, you know, it, it can include sort of, you, you can do the work beforehand or after, but like on my leggings, mm-hmm. I'll put them on, I'll just fold them up, and I will kind of just maybe use the edge of my foot as a guide or uh-huh. something, cover stitch, and I go back and there's a flap of fabric hanging out there, uh-huh. right? And I trim that then. You can trim it back, and it's really nice to have a pair of applique scissors like duck bills mm-hmm. to trim that. So you trim right up to the stitching. Right. Without cutting the stitching. Don't cut the stitching. Right. So in that case, you know, you're trimming that raw edge right right up close. Okay. So either way, whatever works for you, different situations. Now I'll tell you the ZD way. Oh, oh my. Okay. And I know that not everybody can do this or wants to do this or wants to try this. But there are some of us that have this tactile talent, okay, of being able to feel where the raw edge is through the top of the fabric. So you're just going to let you know what it's like to live a, like a, a life of a sewist with ESP about well, fabric. <laughs> well, I guess, and I will tell you who the people that I know have done this, that they can relate to this. And a lot of them are nurses like me, and they're nurses from years gone by, that you had to palpate where a vein was, or you had to palpate <laughs> where where an artery was, and you could feel it, and then you made a blind stick to, yeah, get, to, to yeah. go t- for these things, okay? So if you can touch someone's arm and feel their... Feel their brachial pulse and get a, a blood gas, you'll be able to do this, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So what I do when I'm making my leggings is I fold that up sort of haphazardly, like an inch or so is what I think it's going to be. That's usually what I, I, I cut for a allowance. And then I feel where that little ridge is through the fabric. Now, obviously, if it's something a little bulky, maybe it won't work. Yeah. But generally, it's on a knit, and you can usually feel it. And I make sure that I ride that ridge, I feel, between those two needles, that yes. those two needles are straddling. So... um that's how okay, I do that's it. That's how I do it. Yeah, there that's you go. How I, I pal, I pal, oh, it's yeah. the palpation. It's how to palpate your hem. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about needles and position and then take a quick message break before we get back with our tips for cover stitching. So our cover stitch machine, you can have three needles in the cover stitch part of it. In our Correct. Com- okay. And you can use any combo of the three. So let's talk about the the possibilities that this presents. So if you use all three needles, it's called a triple triple cover stitch. Right. If you use the outermost needles, which would be the outer left and the outer right. Okay. 
This would be called a wide cover stitch. Okay. So those are needles one and three, right? We skip two. Our left and right. Yeah, yeah. You can do one, two, three, or left, middle, right, depending on. Our machine well, actually yeah, okay. lists them as one, two, and three. Well, okay. So yeah. yes, yes. So from left to right, one, two, and three. So if you use one, two, three, it's triple. If you use one and three, it's a cover stitch wide. Mm -hmm. If you use one and two, it's a cover stitch. I think they just call it. I don't even know if they call it narrow. It's sort of like. This is a cover stitch to the left. Oh. I, I would know call they, I would call it the left narrow cover yeah, stitch. Yeah, so that could be left narrow. So and that, if you right. So the distance between, you know, needles one and two is smaller than the distance between needles one and three. Right. And it's over to your left. But then if you use needles two and three only, it's the same width. Right. As one and two, but it's over to your right. Right. So you get that cover stitch narrow over to the right. Exactly. But wide can be great for bulkier fabrics i don't know i use wide i like wide sometimes i think it's a bit wide for my finer knits i just like the way mm. the narrow looks i think maybe i use wide the most sometimes it depends if you have a very fine knit you will get some tunneling that you don't like right yeah really this all these positions and everything they don't i don't think they have a function in the way that like you know, I, right. the, the, I, I, you're going to get stretch. You're going yes. to get. Now, when I'm doing my palpation hem, uh -huh. I think I prefer like the, the wide. wide because, you know, I, I've i got more of an area to get, and then, you know, get that covered. You know, we always tell you to look for landmarks in sewing. That's right. So if you are using one of those narrow cover stitches, maybe you want to use the one to the left. Yes. Because you like. Where the, know, where the happens landmark happens to is. land, right. Maybe you like using one to the right because you like right. where the landmark is. And the reason we tell you to use landmarks and not look at the needle is because the needle is moving and therefore your eyeball will move. And you want something that is stable and and stays in one place and that's what you want as a landmark. You don't want a moving part. No, and um, you yes, I never look at my needles while I'm sewing. And you can, you know, you can tell people who do. You can see, like, I've been in class, uh, uh, yep. and they're, like, their head's even bobbing up and yeah. down sometimes. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, always look for those landmarks. Yeah. One of our suggested episodes. And that's in any sewing, any time. One of our suggested episodes is, like, markings on presser feet. What do they mean? Right. And I was like, oh, well, great. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about we that. We can have that little yeah, talk. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, okay. Just so, to keep your head from bobbing up and yeah, down. Yeah, to keep you, it's to keep you from uh, right. having neck fatigue. You yeah. won't look like a chicken while you're sewing. <laughs> All right, so... You may, though, if you have a cover stitch machine or a combo machine, you might not have that triple cover stitch option. Just FYI. Right. Some um, of them only have two needles. Yes. And some of them, it's just, usually it's just like a wide. And then. It's not even, an, um, they don't have the more narrow stitch. Correct or me. Or something sort of between what we have. Right, mm -hmm. right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that generally if you have a machine that will do a cover stitch, it will also do a chain stitch. You think, is that true? I have never seen one that hasn't. Okay. So. I, I would be surprised if it doesn't. We're not going to go yeah. way into chain stitching right now, but chain stitching is where you're using one needle and one looper. Right. Now, you can have a chain stitch machine that does not do a cover stitch. There you go. There okay. You go. It is different from a lock stitch. Right. It is also different from an overlock machine. It is a different yes. stitch. Yes. So a chain stitch doesn't have a bobbin. Right. It has a looper or another type of little mechanism that, right. that brings the thread through the loop when the needle comes down, you know, into the mechanism. So that's why I say if you have a chain stitch machine, mm -hmm. it may not be a cover stitch machine because you may only have one needle. Yep. yep. If you have only one needle, you have a chain stitch. All right. Well, let's take a quick break here. Um, come back and talk about tips. This week's Sewing Out Loud podcast is brought to you by My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. You know we love the quality of Baby Lux sewing machines, and now their genuine collection sewing machines are available for purchase online. That's right. No matter where you are located, Baby Lux quality is at your fingertips. 
The perfect gift for the maker in your life, the Genuine Collection includes an affordable range of machines that are great for travel or for the creative person who wants to explore sewing. Machines start at just $150 and ship for free. Listeners to Sewing Out Loud will receive a $25 online gift card to My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop with the purchase of a Genuine Collection machine. Use it on sewing supplies, patterns, or notions for yourself or someone you love. Visit mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com slash podcast. That's mygirlfriendsquiltshop, shop with two P's and an E, dot com slash podcast to browse the genuine collection. And even if you don't need a machine, get a free pattern for a fabulous zippered pouch when you visit mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com slash podcast. Thanks, Thanks my, my girlfriend's, girlfriend's quilt shop. Quilt shop. So, 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 sewing out loud. And we're back. All right. What's your number? Well, you wanted this addressed. Oh. Wovens and knits. Well, what's your... I thought. Well, yeah, sure. Let's talk about that later. What's your oh. number... What's your number one tip? My number one tip... For cover stitching. Is that I like to keep my threads similarly balanced. Okay. So you can use all kinds of threads. You can use decorative threads. You can use all the... But I keep my two needle threads as being the same type of thread. I mean, it can be a different color. But I would not put like a woolly nylon in one needle and a polyester, you know. Normal yeah, surgery thread. Normal surgery thread. Like a, so, okay, so I wouldn't put a stretch thread in one needle and a stable thread uh-huh. in the other needle. I would not do that. I might put two stable threads in the needles uh-huh. and a stretch th- thread um under in looper. my looper or our flip flop, I might put two. Now, I say this, and you're like, "Does that work every time?" Oh, test it on your fabric. Test it on your application. Yeah, I mean, it's worked every time for me, but sometimes I didn't like how it looked. So uh, that's not what I thought your tip would be. Um, oh. So I'll share my tip. <laughs> Mine is. What she expects me to use talk a, about ESP. Yeah, use a four millimeter stitch length. Oh, or okay. longer almost, almost all always. the time. Almost always. Four millimeters is the longest length you can use mm-hmm. on our cover stitch machine. Yes. So it goes from like, you know, zero or 0.25 right. to four. I always just turn it all the way up. Right. I've never been sorry. Now, that's where we might go back to woven. Okay, woven okay, and knit. versus knit because that's not what I always do on a woven. Okay, so on a knit, I would mm-hmm. say that most of the time, and I see people have trouble, the they when the stitches are too close together on their right. knits it doesn't look good it's not well, feeding nicely and if they're stretching the fabric through okay so anytime yeah. you have anytime you're sewing and you're pulling your knit through and not allowing the machine to do the work you're only supposed to guide you're not supposed to pull right okay your stitch is going to become shorter because you've pulled the, the fabric apart and then when it relaxes it goes back together that's right Okay, so you have altered your stitch, and you don't you don't want to do that. Okay, I the first time I used a cover stitch, um, was on a pair of little. I can't believe she can remember the first time. Well, she, because amazing. I was really afraid of it. Oh, okay. okay, I was afraid of the cover stitch. Was afraid of using it, and so the first time I really used it was on a pair of baby leggings. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm talking sure. like for well for yeah. a two year old. Yeah. I know babies are smaller. But children, than that. whatever. Yeah, they were little. It was uh-huh. little. So, do you need a free arm on your cover stitch machine? You don't need a free arm you on don't any ever, machine. You don't really ever need a free arm. So what I did <laughs> no. because <laughs> the free arm can never be small enough for everything. And you know, someone just posted in the group that they had bought some very specialty like leather and fur sewing machines. Uh-huh. Or or you'll see something like a right. post machine for like right. sewing shoes, shoes and right. stuff. So sure. That's it different. didn't exist. We're, we're addressing home machines here. That's right. So right. if you're sewing a little, I mean, how big around, you know, in a circle, it was like. What's well, not even five. Four, it's not even you know, four inches Four probably. or five yeah. inches or something. And I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? So right. I, I turned the pants inside out, turned the leggings inside out, and 
put, you know, the right side of the fabric underneath the foot. That's right. Okay. This is how you do this. So when people complain about not having a free arm, I'm like, well, you're always going to be able to come up with some sewing project I that's smaller for, than I your free arm. I sewed for 30 years without a free arm. I never, I almost never use it. I always just yeah. turn my garment inside out. So I've used, I use it on occasion. But it's it's usually a weird thing. It's not garment sewing. I really, yeah. It's not really garment sewing. Yeah. It's, it's other things. Home yes. deck or something. Mm-hmm. So so I did that and I did have to I, I did have to stretch slightly you because do it was sometimes so have to small. do that because you have to make space for yeah, the for, for your, the foot. For your foot. Right. So I put the put it on there and I started sewing and then I would uh, sew like maybe two or three stitches, adjust. And stop and adjust. And I you know bring that forward, I you know. I can't I, I really can't stress this enough. Uh-huh. about stopping and readjusting if you need to on many things. I see people, like, they think it's, like, what, like a, a, a contest if you can sew continually, like, in one circle at exactly the... No, you don't have to. You can stop and adjust. There's nothing... That's what makes it good sewing. You know, you are not in a factory. Yeah. Okay? And so... Stop and adjust if you need to. So I did. Yeah. Okay. And I was so worried. I thought, oh, I'm like stretching this a little bit, mm-hmm. this itty bitty little foothold, right. you know, and I'm coming around, da 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 da. And I thought, oh, this is just going to look terrible. Right. God knows how I finished this off because I did not know the technique for doing it. But oh my God, I got it out of the machine and I turned it out right it was side beautiful. out. Beautiful. It was, it was like not distorted. Right. It was. Gorgeous. But I was you just didn't like stretch the oh, entire cup. Oh my well, god! But hey, let were, me, yeah, let me, yeah. you know, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to tell everyone how amazing it was. Okay. Oh um, my god! We got to listen <laughs> how amazing she is again. I was like, oh my god! I'm never going to use anything else to hem my knits. Yeah. I freaking, I no, just was. It is wonderful. I was so amazed. It's really made for this. Yes. We've talked on this podcast before about how overlock stitches mimic like knitted fabrics and lock stitches on sewing machines can mimic wovens, right. okay? So and that's why they can be good for those fabrics. Right. Um so that's what was happening here. It really accommodated It was an epiphany. This little baby legging and I have just oh my god, I love cover stitching. I just love it. I do too. I you know, I I don't want to say this to you guys, but probably most of my sewing is now done on the cover you, stitch and the serger. You have been surging and cover stitching I a lot. I just do a lot of knits. I mean, you've been just making lots of workout clothes. I just clothes. do a lot of knits. A yeah. lot of, you know, big part of your self-care. I think, care like, as you get older, your skin gets more fluid, and so you need your clothes <laughs> to be more fluid. Now, you were on the sewing machine a lot for appliquing those knits, so that was, yes, I don't know that. Yes, yes, yes. On those aerial That costumes. would have been a... Really hard cover stitch deal. Yeah. But I could have chain stitched them. Yeah, you yeah. could have. But. Um, okay, so knits. Any any other tips before we move on to the knits and wovens, though? Yes. Well, Kay. I don't know. I, see, we don't I'm have sorry. the same outline in front of us. Mom, I you took go, notes, go ahead you with the knits and wovens. Oh, just my go God. Ahead. Oh my God. Just go ahead. Well, <laughs> say whatever so you So the say. one thing we can talk about is we have a video online. Yes, yes. That is for how everyone. to finish and secure your cover stitch in the round. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a very good video. It shows you Once how again, to... Once again, CD is assuring you. So it is. No, it is. You know what? You know why I say it's good? It just worked the very first time we didn't do a retake or an edit or anything. It was like amazing. I was like, wow, that's a take. Um, so go go see that video. What Do you know what the title it's of it is? It's called How to Finish a Cover Stitch in the Round, okay. I believe. Um, and it will be in the show notes because like ZD said, it's produced and edited and yeah, it's All it's up there. It, it's it's mm-hmm. a, it's a really nice video to know how. So when we say in the round, we're talking about sort of a leg, uh, uh-huh. you know, a, a, a sleeve somewhere where you are stitching, and then you're coming back over, you're stitching again. Yeah. So that shows you how to uh, finish that off, and and it, it is nice. The other thing I want to talk about, and this can probably segue to wovens, okay, sure. um, wovens knits whatever is that i use my cover stitch machine as a decorative tool sure. also oh yeah okay yeah. so super fun th- we're talking about the top stitching looks like two rows of straight stitching and the bottom looks like a webbing mm-hmm. say right or a crocheted look or something like that so i sometimes want my bottom stitch to be on the 
outer side of my garment. Mm -hmm. I want it to show. So I might hem. I might not turn my pants inside out. Right. I might leave them right side out, correct? Mm -hmm. And then I have to fold up into the hole, so to speak, right? And then I stitch and I get that webby look. Okay. And... I just want to say from someone who was like, yeah, I want to do that. And I just did it every way wrong that you could. So let me tell you <laughs> what not to do. How okay. can you do that well, wrong? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell right. you. Okay. So if, you, if you're if you stitching from the wrong side, the non-public side of your garment. Right. Okay. When you're doing it for real, like the normal traditional cover stitch way, you want your raw edge to straddle between the needles, Right. Yes. Okay. Well, when you're doing oh, it this way, say. don't yes. freaking straddle it between the needles, Mallory. Okay. Yeah. Because you want actually that that raw edge you, to get right. stitched down. You want your needle. Okay. Right. Other thing. Stitching you, the raw edge down. Yes, yes. You do both of them. This is where it's nice to trim. Yeah. This is a good trim area. Trim, trim kind, later. Yeah. It okay. is. All right. Other thing you can or do Or if you're doing that on a seam. Yeah. As a decorative stitch, make sure you stitch down on that seam allowance. Oh, and, God. And not just, well, it won't hurt we anything. Need, it's we need just, to make a video about that because I mess yeah. that up every yeah, time. It, it, it won't hurt it. It's just that it's not as nice. Okay, that's a different yeah. thing. That's a, yeah. But the other thing you can do wrong with hemming and, and using this as a decorative stitch. Where I you got to hear this. I don't even know about these things. <laughs> I'm not like, hey, mom, I just messed mm-hmm. up in the studio. I'd love to tell you I'd about it. I'd like to it. know about all your mistakes. <laughs> Would you? Yeah, I'd like Would to... you? I have, I have a log. <laughs> okay. Mallory screwed up on this day. No. Don't use the amazing video that we made no. to bring your tails to the, <laughs> yeah. to the fabric. You don't have to. You don't need, the, need it. Yeah. Yep, you don't need the finishing because, in the round. Yes, yes. You, oh, I totally did that. I was like, oh my gosh, I just did great. I t- I brought my needle threads to the wrong side. Oh, it's not the wrong side this time because I was putting the looper on the outside of my fabric. It just felt kind of stupid. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that was pretty. Well, pretty funny. and and the way to finish any um any of these stitches, not talking about the round but if you're not in the round and you're it's very similar to a surgery where you would take your tail and And weave it back back through through. or you need to take a seam sealant um because they will they will they're 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 a knitted stitch again it will come undone you have this uh it's when you're this maybe should have you know technically been in the first would have could have part of the podcast we we screwed up yeah we screwed up when you're stitching on the cover stitch machine, on the baby locks, they tell you to do is when you freshly rethread for a cover stitch, do not stitch in the air for the first time. That's you know, true. Right? And you know, I, because... I forget to tell people that, but what I tell people anyway is you have to do a test stitch. Okay. Well, so, don't. But it is true. You, you need to engage so, those threads. Yes. A cover stitch does not have like stitch fingers supporting it the way an overlock stitch does. So the stitch is literally made around the fabric. That is the fabric is almost uh it's integral in the formation of the stitch. And so sometimes when you come off of what you're cover stitching or whatever and you, you can sew in the air after you've got that initial stitch, sometimes you'll chain and sometimes you won't. And that's right. okay. Yeah. Okay, and this is what, you know, you, we've on learned. Our machines have no problems chaining off. Like some, most of the time it happens, but if it doesn't, right. generally it's not a problem for when I like start again. Okay. Right. So you're going to have needle threads on top and this looper on the bottom. Mm-hmm. So when you were talking about finishing off where this actually came from, right. sometimes you'll have to bring those needle threads down. Right. So back. you want to get a needle with a big eye that you can right. you know, stick, have that one thread. Put the threads through the needle and bring them to the other side. And now, enjoy. our finishing in the round video tells you how to do that easily with your machine right. without without a right. needle. You're doing it basically with the help of the machine and not something else. Yes. So, because you have, because this crocheted or knitted or webbed looking stitch is made with the looper, you have the opportunity to use non-needle threads. The looper tunity. The loopertunity. Loopertunist. You have a loopertunity. Are you a <gasps> I'm writing this down. Looper. I want a pin. Looper. Loopertunist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Non needle thread. So I can put. I can thread. put something heavier through that. Woo-hoo. I can put my number eight pearl cotton will work. 
Yeah. Now, this works on my machine. Try it on yours. And I do want to say, test, like, test, test. Sometimes people call loopers lower needles, and they're not a needle not at all. They're not a needle. They do, they never pierce the fabric. That's right. how. That's one reason you know it's a looper. There it you go, never mom. Never pierces the fabric. Oh. And if you have to change them, they're much more expensive. That's a good. That's a really. Great... It has an eye in it, but it never ever <sighs> pierces the fabric. Or you can use. Decorative metallic threads work beautiful here. I'm still in awe of you. Um, more than one thread at a time what? works beautiful here. So I've thread blended. I've, I, so I like have two, just... Two pla- machine embroidery threads or like a thick, yeah, thick yes, thread. Yes, or a thick thread and one machine embroidery and one thin metallic thread. Okay. So I wanted it to be pink and metallic. So I put... Um, a stretchy pink thread with a metallic, a thin metallic embroidery thread through. And it was gorgeous. Okay, so the nature of the cover stitch is stretchy. Mm-hmm. So you can use non-stretchy threads, everybody. Right. You can use normal stretcher right. thread. You could use a top stitching thread. Now, the one thing, we you used a variegated, like, quilting cotton top stitch thread on um, a swimsuit for the kids. Okay. Okay, yes. like to cover and I, stitch. And I did upside down. Yeah. yeah, and I think it just, like, after two seasons, the thread wore out a bit. And I think it was more... F- I it think it was because it was cotton. It was because it was cotton. Right. Yeah, and I was like, um, oh. Co- you know, when you use cotton and you're hitting chlorine and, and sunlight. And sun and yeah. all that jazz. Although... Zelda pointed it out, and she was like, "Only like what two or one and a yeah. half?" And she said, "Look at my pretty hem." Thread. Yes, you know, yes. She... It, it, it did. But yeah, so anytime you're using something like that, or you're using a cotton thread, know that you know it. It's not as durable as a polyester. Sure, but I just want to say, yeah, right. play around with threads. It it should remain pretty stretchy for you. Right. Well, as well as when I take a stretchy thread and I add a metallic thread to it. It will become a little less stretchy. Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, because that one that one thread has just stabilized it. Okay, I'm thinking of a great segue here to something I know you've been burning to talk about. Oh, what? And that's cover stitching on wovens. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Ever since we talked about loopertunity, I'm like just so distracted. Well, I had a loopertunity. Okay. Yes. On some woven fabric. Actually, I think I saw the sample when Sam and I were over there doing some organizing. Um. Cover stitching on woven. So we talked, I'm just going to reference ourselves again. Cover stitching can be great for knits. It allows for a stretchy hem. It can be used on wovens. It's not always appropriate. But what I did, we had this like sort of roughly woven, I'd say it's, I mean, it was like close to a tweed almost fabric. Um, And it was black and gold and we live in columbia missouri where mizzou is and so is it that kind of woolly looking thing yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and so what i did was i cover stitched i cut a square of this stuff mm-hmm. i cover stitched like whatever a half inch in in a square pattern on one layer of this fabric okay and then i fringed the edges yes. and i used i used the loopertunity to put gold metallic thick mm-hmm. thread in there so it had this very beautiful border okay around this napkin and it was fabulous okay um fabulous loopertunity fabulous loopertunity where i think people use a cover stitch on a woven that is not appropriate and i guess this is you know you can correct me or this you could can, be a personal choice go ahead a very curved hem i don't think that well it depends on where that curved hem is Okay. And this is what I'm going to tell you when I see people do this. So they turn it up two inches. That's what I'm talking okay. about. If you turn it up a half inch, it's gonna it, w- it will probably work nicely for you. Yeah, I guess. And it depends on how curved the hem is. That's what I'm, I'm talking so, about. Like, okay, let's talk about like a 90 degree that's been just like rounded a bit. Okay. And people will try to cover stitch that. Mm -hmm. And they have to fold, you know, you have to fold it up somewhat to get a cover stitch. And Mm -hmm. on a woven, it ends up getting kind of like folded and bunched Mm -hmm. up and not nice. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal if you have a knit that you're trying to hem like that, you are going to be able to um, exploit the stretch of the fabric to cover stitch like that. And that can work on a knit. But, you know, when you're talking about this, yeah, 
that's just as true on a regular sewing machine. That's very true. So, yes. Can, yes, yes, can, it is. You know, it's like top stitching on a regular sewing no, machine. you're very correct. You're yes. going to have all that fabric under. And, and somebody um, actually mentioned this in cover stitching and asked was asking, how much do you turn up your T-shirt? Yeah. So if your T-shirt's a straight cylinder, you can yeah. turn it up five inches and stitch it. And it doesn't and matter. Away, yeah. It won't matter. But someone was talking about a flare, and they were putting like a two-inch hem in a T-shirt. And I don't even know why you would put a two-inch hem in a T-shirt. I'm not sure about that. It. Um, I can't think of a reason I would. I put about an inch. But when you try to reconcile right, the a wider flare. flare right. Or, okay. Uh, if it's the, a minimal flare, it might work. The outside of that curve, then right. to the inside of the curve. If you right. try to use the cover stitch there, or if you tried to turn it up. Right. An inch on your sewing machine, right. you're going to have a problem. So that yeah. So don't don't blame your cover stitch if you come to that problem because that problem exists. Yes. Because of physics and There's, not because of your machine. It's another really great video we have called the tiny hem video. Yes. If you're if you are doing fine fabric or very curved hems, like a shirt tail right. hem, uh it's shirt tail hem is what and, comes and to mind. I think this is one thing you can Co- look circle at. Circle skirts. Circle skirts. I think this is one thing. Yeah, circle skirt. You can't top stitch it unless it's a tiny hem because you are folding up much more fabric. You know, that diameter that's an inch away yeah, is a is much, much smaller. Much long, well, depending on which one I'm you're sorry, talking diameter. about first. diameter. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. the, di- it's the diameter <laughs> of the edge is much greater than, you know, coming in an inch, right, towards the yes. middle of your circle because all of a sudden well get this it's smaller okay. you have your diameter of your circle and you want to take it up an inch so you fold it up an inch but you're actually two inches now into the circle does that make exactly. sense exactly yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yes you can be sewing to it <laughs> so but um i think you know you can look on your ready to wear yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. you can see that most of your t-shirts just don't have a real big hem right and i don't know why someone needed this big maybe hem. it's because they thought about like Maybe the look if, of a if, fabric or if band. they were wanting weight, I don't know. Okay. If you want a fabric band, add a band. Do a fabric band, yeah. You can search different. a band onto mm-hmm. there. You can, you know, yeah. there are things to do that. Okay. But um, you shouldn't really need to add weight to a knit hem particularly. Um, okay, so let's talk about wovens a bit more. Do you have anything else to add about wovens? I have another topic that popped into my brain um, on this on this same in well, the same vein. Like I said, ahead. I love okay free. Motion, um, you know, onto a woven to make a decorate this fabric with that cover stitch. I love it. Okay, let me for yeah. one sec. Okay, you said free motion, right? So it's not true free motion, but it's squiggly it's sort lines. Sort of like free flowing. It's, it's driving on the baby, highway. You know, baby and lock not driving on the highway. Baby lock was very smart when they started to, you know kind of talk about that with the sashikos. Yeah. They didn't call it free motion because the feed dogs right. are engaged, but they call it free flowing. Free flowing, But yeah, exactly. so you can you can decorate. You can use this as surface design yes. on a woven. Yeah, uh, ch- cover stitching or chain stitching mm-hmm. with the decorative looper threads. And, Looks you know, like couching almost well, sometimes. Right, and, and we call it, you know, oftentimes like making your own fabric yeah so yeah. you have you're decorating your own fabric you can, if you have uh when baby lock started coming out with these machines that had the big spaces to the right of the needle oh yeah man i mean i'm talking about cover yep. and chain stitch machines they were like you can quilt you know and so you i mean you can you can fit a big old piece of and i have quilted stuff. with a cover stitch yeah. okay um let's see if i can remember Shoot. Yeah, oh, I get you I off remember. woven, decorative, whatever. Woven, okay, I don't know if we can go versus... into this completely, but sometimes. Oh, she's taking us down a Sometimes people use a cover stitch to sort of highway. top yeah. stitch a seam. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just calm down. It's fine. Wasn't that a good topic to bring up, Mom? It is a good okay. idea. <laughs> I do it all the time. Okay. <laughs> I did it two days ago, I believe. So, so anyway, um, top stitching over a seam. Now, Sometimes people will surge on a neckband or zigzag on a neckband mm-hmm. on a shirt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, now I want to top stitch this to make this lay flat. And I'm like, well, it should lay pretty it, flat. It should lay fairly nice already. Okay. Because you cut the neckband the correct proportion. Yeah. That's what makes it work. Okay, mm-hmm. everybody? Yes, if your neckband's not laying right, it may not always be your stitching. It's that your neckband's too long. And you should 
if you're doing it on a serger, you should be stitching with the neck band on top. Facing and you're you. going inside the circle, okay? Yep. And and if your serger is threaded and tensioned correctly, it slightly will pull that that seam allowance to the side of the garment. To the to the bodice of the right. garment mm-hmm. instead of toward the neck mm-hmm. band. Okay. That's right. So it can't always fix like, you know, top stitching. If it's ugly, it might be staying ugly. <laughs> like top right. stitching with a zigzag or with a cover stitch or with a whatever, it's not always going to fix your issue. There, There's not always turning, you know, the sow's ear into the silk purse in this case right. if you think that's going to happen. That is um, a foundational issue. If you have stretched issue. out of shape, you have stretched out of shape. Right. Now, what I will say about top stitching on a neckband, whether it be on a cover with your cover stitch machine or if you're going to zigzag with your sewing machine or however you're going to do it, you need to take into account what kind of bulk you're presented with. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a very bulky, say, body to your garment and maybe your neck uh, band is a thinner fabric mm-hmm. or a you know a different fabric, whatever. You may not be able to straddle your seam. Yeah. Okay. You may have to top stitch only on the body part, right? Right. Right. So so you have to take, again, you have to test this, everybody. If you ha't tested, you're going to be pulling it out. Um, also, okay, when you, you like to add, okay, there's a, there's a finish in ready to wear where it looks like there's a cover stitch on both sides. And I'm forgetting Mm -hmm. the name. Mm-hmm. I know. This. I am too. And I there, actually tried to think of it earlier and I couldn't. There is a brand that makes a machine like this. Yes. Okay, for the home sewer. Yes. Uh, and I, I don't see it becoming very common. Well, I've it's heard really it's, expensive right now, I've too. heard it's kind of finicky to thread. So it's and, not, and it's really expensive. It may get to a point where it's it cheaper. is available. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, that cover stitch look on both sides, you can mimic that right. by cover stitching, right. you know, by serging and then cover stitching. Yes. Okay, so... When you're doing that, ZD, is that necessarily like strengthening? Do you have to do it so that your so that your seam won't pop? No, no. And when you see this in ready to wear, a lot of times that is the seam. That's right. It's not a top stitching done in one. It step. truly is the seam. This machine knows how to put these two pieces of fabric together, mm-hmm. you know. So it's a totally different process than what we're doing at home. And what it can do for you, if you want to do it at home, it can make the seam flat. It can be yes. decorative. Mm-hmm. Yay. But it's not like, oh, I, okay, I'm telling y'all, no matter how many blog comments I get, I'm going to remain calm <laughs> and say that we seam our active wear together with a three thread narrow mm-hmm. and we use it day in and day out and we are doing things that flexible. Yeah. Well, I do some I mean, pretty wicked do things some to my crazy clothes. stuff, and mm-hmm. then I'm squatting. Yeah. You know, and lifting weights and everything, and that three TN on our, you know, properly tensioned right. surgers in good working order, it's holding up just fine. I mean, not okay. just fine. No, I mean, it's holding no up. No <laughs> stitch is going to hold up if it is not in proper tension. Okay. Right. And proper balance. So you it's don't... not going to work. And when you say your thread lets loose at the end of the stitch, something's, something's wrong. Something's off. So I'm just saying, if you want to do this, you know, top stitching or whatever, I know a lot of people like a flat seam. It doesn't seem to bother me when my garment is so close fitting. Like the seam just, what that seam's not very wide Well, anyway. you'll get a close fitting seam if you do a three thread narrow. And well, that's you don't true add too. Another, that's one reason yeah. you do a three thread narrow so you don't have the, the bulk. bulk. Yeah. So anyway, um, you have that. Uh you don't you don't have to though cover stitch. I remember Jackie asked this question. She was this is when we had the shop and she was like, I want to make my daughter right. leggings and she was she was squatting. She was weightlifting. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, but can I actually do this stuff? I was like, Yeah, just sew her up a pair of leggings on your evolution right. and it's fine. And she was like, Really? And I was like, Yeah, she did. It's great. Okay, here's the other thing that's going on too, if you say it's not working for me or why are my stitches popping? If there's not enough fabric in your garment, well, and yeah, it doesn't that's fit true. you, there is going that is the 
point of stress, and yes, those stitches will let go at some point. Gosh, I, you know, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's honestly, not something I bring up I, a lot. No, no, honestly, <laughs> very true. <laughs> I mean, there's negative ease, and then there's too much negative ease. Yeah. I mean, I have seen people in all sorts of garments, whether they're red, expensive ones. Yeah, like, yeah. If if there's not what, enough fabric the for your body, Lulu Lemon, Lulu Lemon, Lulu what? Yeah. The you know, two or three hundred dollars, they will split too if they're the wrong size. size. And I see people because they, I don't, I don't, I can't stand them that tight. But I see people get into garments where they think, oh, I'll wear this like my girdle too. Well, then it's going to take the wear and tear of sure, your girdle. Sure, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Yeah. That's a really good. That's a really good point. Yes. I didn't think about how because I mean our knit fabrics they do stretch so much. But yeah, I'm telling you, people. All right, so you don't have and to... And stuff does wear out, okay? So <laughs> yes. I had a pair of leggings that I made, uh-huh. right? And I was like, well, look at this right here on my side. This stitch is coming out. I, uh, and then I thought back, and they were three years old, and I wore them probably twice, laundered them and worn them probably twice a week for three years. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess oh, I, some thread might I wear guess out. I might have to kind of retire them or, or repair. You know, sometimes you have to repair your sewing. Uh, sure, yeah. sure. And you yeah. go to aerial class, what, like four or five times a week most of the time? When uh, every... Six to eight. Oh, six to eight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yes. They... So, this is not just wearing them. This is like out. rubbing them up against the stuff. And, you know, my and, favorite yeah. thing to bring yeah. up is how <laughs> this is yeah. my favorite. Okay. okay. Is it I... about me? No. Oh, good. I will. There is a there's a pair of leggings that this happened to once and a pair of underwear where I sewed them up with a three thread narrow and I missed a spot. Uh huh. Okay. Like there was a little hole in the waistband. Mm-hmm. That would be your fault it, so and it, not the yes, machine. Absolutely. Yes. So my fault. <laughs> I missed a spot, but it never got any bigger, so I just never fixed it. Actually, I've done they that were, too. They were pregnancy underwears. They were some of that. I was yeah. making this underwear that went up over my belly, uh-huh. and I was like, "Well, this is not going to last forever, of course." And so the, I had stitched on this band with the three TN, and I'd missed this spot, and right. it, just, it never ripped, it never got bigger. And I was like, "Well, whatever." No well, one. You that know. might be something we want to mention too. That <laughs> we make Zelda's little leggings. I make Catherine's yeah. leggings and leotards. I, I make all these garments with the three TN, and. Those are kids, and you know the way Zelda comes home, her butt's oh all dirty God. and her knees yeah. like from the playground and everything. She's she a great time. You know, <laughs> generally the fabric wears out before the seam. Also, the if someone wants like we those uh those those dance costumes that you made for Crazy for You are twenty years old, and we yes. still have one of them, and yes. they're still being used at that high school, and they yes. were made of three ten. Okay, yes. we have totally gotten off topic because we were talking about the cover stitch. <laughs> I so, whispered. I'm sorry. Use your cover stitch. So in conclusion, think in, about your opportunities. Take all the opportunities that life has. Oh my to god! Give you. I so can't wait to post. Okay. Hashtag opportunity. Hashtag opportunity. All right. Uh, so thanks for um. If you have any more cover stitch questions, or if you do uh, ever feel the urge to support sewhere.com and these podcasts and everything, you can become a member and you get special goodies. Okay, so right. that in that zigzag uh, group we did that live video, and you know that was in September or October because the baby was little, um, really little, and I went over and had to nurse him and watch and moderate the video from the other room. So, so the other thing too <laughs> is if you want to you know request a podcast topic that's possible please look through our library but um don't think because you've requested it you don't see it the next week or in the next month that we aren't taking it into consideration or addressing it sometimes um we've got something pre-planned that it might go with later or you know we're not ignoring your request yes so everyone thank you so much for listening uh you can find us on instagram we are so here calm and if you if you haven't followed us on instagram that would be so cool i would love to get to the coveted ten thousand followers mark that would be just so neato mosquito so anyway uh follow us there you can find us on facebook and all of the other fun places and mom you want to take it away so long and so happy Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.